In a world filled with doubt, it's comforting to know there's someone we can trust. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. My friend, you can trust God. And stay with us and find out more. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in search of the Lord's way with Phil Sanders. Welcome to In Search of the Lord's Way. We're here to search God's Word for the Lord's will and what He teaches. God's way is always the best way to live. And we're grateful you spend this time with us. We want to be a part of your life each week. A college girl once talked with her preacher and said, I've never trusted anyone in my life. How can I trust the Lord Jesus Christ with my problems? Well, it was spring and the girl was going home for a break. And the preacher asked her how she was traveling. And she said, well, I'm going to fly. Well, do you have a ticket? He asked. No, she said. I have to find out what time I can get a plane. How are you going to do that? He inquired. Well, she said, I'm calling the airline to find out the time and reserve a seat on that plane. Then my friend will take me to the airport and I'll board the plane. He said, well, do you know the reservation clerk at the airline? Well, no, I don't. And your friend is going to take you to the airport trusting the information of this unknown clerk? Yes. Do you know the pilot of the plane? No, I don't then you're going to trust your friend to drive you to the airport. You're going to trust some unknown clerk at the airline office to reserve your seat on that flight. And then you're going to take your seat in an airliner flown by a pilot that you don't know, trusting him to get you home. (laughs) My dear, that's a lot of trust. When you put your life, your soul, and your problems in the hand of the Lord, You put it into the hand of someone who knows and loves you very much. You can trust the Lord who died and rose again on your behalf. If you want to know more about trusting God, we offer the information on this program free. If you'd like a printed copy or CD of our study, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083 or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. We also stream this program on our website, searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song. We'll read from Psalm 37, 3-7, and then we'll explore what it means to trust God. today comes from a Psalm of David, that's Psalm 37, verses 3 through 7, where David talks about his reason for trusting in God. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. There David tells of his faith in God and how he can wait patiently and trust in Him. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, help us in every way to love You, to trust You, and to serve You with all our heart and soul. And may we always do Your will in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To trust means to rely on the integrity, power, or ability of someone or something to do what he or it promises. We, we buy products with a guarantee or a warranty, so we may have the assurance the product will do what we need or desire. We place our trust in people believing that some person has the ability and the integrity to keep his word. God expects his people to trust in him. The Lord told Noah to build an ark, but Noah had never seen rain. Noah obeyed God and saved his family. God called Abraham to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Here Abraham trusted God, and God trusted Abraham. God asked Joshua and the Israelites to walk around the city of Jericho for seven days. If they followed his instructions, God said he would cause the walls to fall down flat. Hebrews 11 and verse 30 says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. Trusting God involves at least four things. First, it involves dependence upon the Almighty. We must rely on God to do the things that we cannot do for ourselves. We're simply human beings, wholly dependent upon God for life and for our very being. Without God, we could do nothing. James 1.17 says that every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. God promises to hear the prayers of His children, and the Lord Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, Therefore I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they shall be granted you. Our Father answers prayer, and He cares for His children. Some want to be completely self-reliant, never needing anyone, but we all need help at some point in our lives. Second, trusting God involves risk. Some things we know and some things we don't know. Some things we can do and some things we can't. Now and then we must put ourselves into God's hands. The Apostle Paul suffered many things, including imprisonment. Shortly before his death, he wrote in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 12, 
For this reason I also suffer these things, but I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Paul placed his soul into the hands of God. Now, people may be able to take your life, but they cannot take your soul. When you become a Christian, you belong to the Lord, body, soul, and spirit. Do you trust God with your soul? Third, trusting God involves courage. Serving God means finding the courage to do what is right, even when no one, when no one else will. The Bible tells of David's courage when Goliath challenged the army of Israel. David said to the Philistine in 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47, You come to me with a sword and spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands and I will strike you down and remove your head from you and I will give uh, your dead body, the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. Well, by faith, David defeated Goliath that day. Fourth, trusting God involves commitment. Biblical faith is never just an intellectual matter. Faith always acts. Trust demonstrates itself. It overcomes the fear by relying on God. Trust walks forward with hope and confidence that God is ever present, ever watching, and ever helping. David wrote in Psalm 20 and verse 7, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. I tell you, when life presses against us, We hold fast to God. When the world mistreats us, we call upon God for help. Now, you might at this point ask, why should we trust God? Well, that's an important question, and it deserves our time. First, we can trust God because we know His character. God always keeps His promises. As an old man and battling the Canaanites for many years, Joshua could proclaim in Joshua 21 verse 45, not one of the good promises which the Lord has made uh, to the house of Israel failed. All came to pass. I tell you, God keeps His promises because God does not lie. Titus 1 and verse 2 speaks of God who cannot lie. The Bible repeatedly says God is faithful. Paul reassured the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3, But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We can take heart because God never abandoned His people. Psalm 9 and verse 10 says, Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. God's character alone makes him utterly trustworthy. Second, we can trust God because he is wise. God sees and knows things that we cannot see and know. When something happens that we don't understand, we mustn't give up. God can see things we can't. God isn't limited in his understanding like we are. Psalm 147 and verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. God sees and knows the future. God Himself reminds us in Isaiah 46 verses 9 to 10, Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. 
You know, what seems a mystery to us is often clear to God. We must trust that He will do what is right and good. Third, we can trust God because we know that He is powerful. God can do things that we cannot do. The Lord Jesus said in Mark 10 verse 27 that all things are possible with God. Paul told the church at Philippi in Philippians 4 19, And my God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We trust God because He has shown us time and again what He is able to do for us. Fourth, we can trust God because we are assured by His love. God will always do what is best for us because He loves us. He may not do what we want when we want it, but He will do what is best for us in the long run. God will be with us through every storm, every drought, every hurt, every struggle, every trial, and every problem. In a time of persecution, Paul said to the Roman Christians, But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, verses 37 to 39. Yes, we can rejoice in the love of God. Now, when you trust God, there are some things trust will do for you and help you to realize. First, trusting God will help you realize the whole world is not on your shoulders. You know, God has been running this world a long time, and He will continue to uphold all things by His power. In a time of great stress, Peter urged Christians to cast all your anxiety upon Him because He cares for you. 1 Peter 5 and verse 7. The psalmist David, writing by inspiration, said in Psalm 55, verse 22, Cast your burden upon the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Second, trusting God will help us understand that God will see us through today's struggles. Psalm 37, 5 to 6 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Christians trust God to make things right, to heal what is broken, and to give them strength when they're weak. We may not be able to see how things will work out, but God can make it happen. The Bible teaches in Proverbs 3, 5 to 7, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. God will help us when we trust Him enough to do what He teaches. Third, trusting God will help us realize that when physical life is harsh, we can still say it, it is well with my soul. Psalm 125 verse 1 teaches that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. We may lose many things, but we're secure if our souls are in God's hands. In 1874, the French steamer Ville de Harve, on a return trip from America, collided with a large sailing vessel, and it sank in half an hour. Mrs. H.G. Spafford and her four children were aboard that steamer. All four children were drowned, and only Mrs. Spafford survived. She sent a two-word message to her husband in Chicago, Saved Alone. For over a year, the grieving couple agonized over the accident. Two years later, Mr. Spafford wrote a song in commemoration of the death of his children. He wrote, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Why am I talking about these matters? 
Well, when I preach at a church, I take notice that the pews have people whose hearts are aching, whose lives are difficult, and who need the comfort and the reassurance of our loving and almighty God. From the letters that I receive, I realize that many of you are facing heartaches, physical problems, family struggles, crushing financial burdens. The prophet Isaiah said this about God in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, that the steadfast of mine you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. And how badly we all need perfect peace, the comfort and assurance that the Lord is with us. We all cry out for God to hear us and to help us through the struggles that we face. And He will help us. David wrote in Psalm 40, verses 1 to 4, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud, nor to those who lapse into falsehood. Every time we see how God has helped a brother or sister, it ought to reassure our hearts that God will help us too. My friend, trust, trust, trust in God because He is our hope. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can put our souls and our lives into Your hands, knowing that You will bless us and be with us and can help us through every struggle and through every problem. And Father, help us to always to, to love You and to obey You. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord's way is not impossible. He gives us a bearable yoke and a light burden. He wants to help us live righteous and productive lives. When you trust in God, your life will begin to change. You'll be able to say, as Nahum did in Nahum 1 verse 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knows those who take refuge in Him. God wants a close relationship with you, a relationship built on trust and love. And God will bless and care for you 
if you'll trust in Him. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, And without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. Become a Christian by putting your trust in Christ. Let Him know that He is your Lord. And trusting Jesus means following His teaching. Trust will lead you to abandon what the Lord calls sin and follow after righteousness. With your trusting faith and loving repentance, confess Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized into Christ. Now, baptism is an immersion in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And when you're baptized, the Lord washes away your sins, Acts 22, 16. He makes you His child, Galatians 3, 26 and 7, and He adds you to His church. And once you become a Christian, continue to live with faith and trust in God and don't ever give up on God. Well, we hope that today's study about trusting God has stirred your heart and if you want a free printed copy or CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now our programs appear on our website at searchtv.org. And we offer Bible correspondence courses to help you learn more about God's will. And if you want one, let us know. We offer free study sheets that go along with our programs. And you can download them free before each program or at our website or call and request them. Now, if you call, we won't ask you for money or put you on a list. But we do ask that you please get involved with the Church of Christ that's in your area. They're brethren who support us. And if you're looking for a sound church, a home that you can go and worship and be right with God, we'll be happy to help you find one. Churches of Christ love and want guests. And if you worship with them, you'll be glad you attended. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend about the program. As always, we say, God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.